Oh yes, hello cats and kittens and feral souls and all of my YouTube darlings. Welcome back to the channel. Well, as promised last week in my live stream, I'm filming some daily life at base camp. So during my project renovations, I have to keep myself going. So for myself, the carpenters and the kids, I'm making a big pot of beef bourguignon, also known as bougie beef stew. There I've trimmed the fat off this bottom chuck round roast. So it's now down to about two pounds. Looking good, looking trim. And then next I will be cutting it into two inch cubes. Now if there's any equipment that you see here in the video that you like, I'll try to leave links for it in the description below. Like that beautiful red knife. So what makes it Bourguignon is it's Burgundy, it's red wine. So you want to find some bold wine, uh, sideshow. I thought I would try it out. This is what they call a suede. It's a fancy wine opener. I thought I'd keep the program fancy for you today. And in case you've never seen one of these, um, they're pretty fun to use. And yes, I have paint on my hands, but it's clean paint. Now remember, I'm a carpenter this week as well as a chef. So don't judge. Quick little twist. There you have it. So slick. Now to this marinade, because this isn't the stew part yet, this is just the marinade. We're adding two bay leaves. Thyme. Now I usually prefer fresh, but this particular day I didn't have any, so I'm at the house, I'm getting the beef ready. So I'm using what I have on hand fresh. I've got a huge rosemary bush out by the hillbilly hot tub. So I'm never running out of that. There's the beef in the two inch cubes. You can never have enough garlic in your life, right? Okay, one. I think this is probably about two tablespoons on this spoon. But uh, yeah, let's get that in there. You want to salt over the beef before you add it to the marinade. And you're going to let it rest on the beef for about 15 or 20 minutes. You're also going to pepper over the beef as well. This flavor gets down inside the meat as well as it will flavor the marinade. Flat leaf parsley, one of my favorite herbs to use. This herb is so beneficial and medicinal and it's very flavorful too and it adds a lot of color to things. And there we have the marinade. Next we're going to add some olive oil that helps out in the marination process, as well as keeping the meat moist. And we'll mix that in too. Now let's get all that beef into this marinade. I know I should probably use a bigger spoon, but as you'll see up here in the video, my kitchen is kind of in the kitchen and then all around the house because, uh, yeah, you'll see. There's repairs going on. 
Now, I did forget to add the sweet onion originally, and I was painting and thinking about this delicious dish that I'm going to be eating in a few days. And I was like, oh my God, I forgot to add the onion. So I pulled it out of the fridge again, added the onion. There we go. Sweet onion too. And more wine. Because you want it to be all covered. Oh, and don't forget to take a taste of the wine too. And yes, now I found a bigger spoon. Mixing it all together so that it's all coated. Look at that. Oh my gosh. And then into the fridge it goes for two days. You have to be very patient with this dish. Quarter after four in Oregon. Let's take a look at the sky. Often we have weather like this. I really enjoy it. It's just so quiet and beautiful. Look at that fog above the trees up there. Let's head back inside and let me show you what's going on around base camp. So I have been decluttering, painting, and then doing a few repairs on the house. I'm very house proud. I do love my home. And there's my new table and chairs. I just love those. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, got a few things gone out of the living room. You notice the couch looks different because it usually is a day bed. But I put it back in couch mode and some of the pillows don't have cases because I'm ordering new cases for them. And that was the queen or king's chair from the kitchen. Look at that monstera plant, it's huge. Yeah, cleared out this area too. Also that bookshelf, I have cleared that out. I now only have, out of six shelves, three have books. Did a lot of washing before the painting. Just a general deep clean. Look at those walls. Oh my God, they're ready to receive pictures now. Used Murphy's Oil Soap. Washed down all my wood. And look at how shiny those floors are. The house is just feeling so beautiful and clean. Ugh, but here's the ug. Okay, I had to repair that pipe. Ew, look at that ceiling. So that's going to get cut out. Yes, that's mold. That is probably exacerbating my asthma. Not good. So day three of the beef. You want to take it out of the fridge and drain it and let it come up to room temperature. While that's happening, you want to cook up six slices of bacon. Now you're only braising these. You're not browning them so that they're bacon bits. Because you still want some of the fat to come out into the stew and flavor the stew. That's what also gives it a very distinct flavor in the beef bourguignon or bougie beef stew, as we're calling it here today on the Ninth Element channel and kitchen. So once those are all braised up, you can see there's a little bit of fat left on them. That's going to really flavor the stew. Oh yeah, butter, baby. Butter makes everything better. Real food, real butter. I also like to use the salted butter because it adds flavor and I'm okay to have salt in my diet. So then braising the beef in small batches. So you're, it's kind of, you know, at this point, you're almost poaching it this oil and juices but you're giving it like a cookover but you're not cooking it thoroughly and then you're adding it into your you're taking it out of the pan and putting it in your crock pot and then cooking up more beef and just doing this over and over until it's done now there's the bacon cooked. you also need two pounds of mushrooms most recipes for the beef bourguignon call for white but i like cremini and white for flavor you also need a bag of pearl onions. That's what also gives the distinct flavor. And lots and lots of butter. Flat leaf parsley. Fresh thyme. I made it out to the store and got some fresh thyme now. 
and Cab Sav. 2020, not exactly a good year, but we'll move on. So chopping the bacon into kind of bigger pieces, you're going to add that into the crock pot where the beef is. There's more beef cooking. Then into the pan, you're going to brown the pearl onions or braise them, you know, brownie braise. But you want to get them cooked up because they are starting out frozen. Then you want to thick slice the mushrooms. You don't want them thin, you want them thick because they will cook down and wilt a little. So you want to keep them as plump and juicy as possible. You also want to use 12 ounces of, I love these tricolor carrots. And then six ounces of regular baby carrots. Still braising those pearl onions. Look at those, they're looking great. So moving those into the crock pot as well with the beef. Now into the beef juices, we are going to add the carrots. And if you need to add more butter, then do so. Salt and pepper over these as well to give them some flavor. Just sauteing carrots alone with salt and pepper is so delicious. Try it. So with the bacon and the pearls and the onions, look at how it's turning out. Oh my goodness, does that not look delicious? Adding the carrots into it. Mixing it around. Adding the rest of the first bottle of wine to this. Mixing it in. We don't use the marinade. We make a fresh stew juice for the stew. And there's the regular carrots. And you don't need fancy beef stock or don't even bother making it from scratch. Just use instant, it's good. So I follow the recipe on the jar to make beef broth and you need two cups to add to the stew. Oh my goodness. And then you want to also add three whole bay leaves into the stew. And fresh sprigs of thyme. I really love fresh herbs. I'm a huge advocate for them. You've heard me talk about it before in other cooking videos. To me, they just up the, up the level of flavor and quality of the dish. You also need to add some tomato paste, mix that in, cover it, put it in your crock pot, turn it on high, bring it to a boil, and then turn it low to simmer for six hours. Adding more butter to your pan. Now you want to salt and pepper over your mushrooms and cook them in small batches. As Julia Child would say, don't crowd the mushrooms. Two o'clock, ugh, you know cooking and painting and cleaning. That's all I've been doing for January, folks. There's not much else to film. I mean, I don't think you want to watch me clean. All right. So now it's been cooking for almost four hours. Look at that. Mm. My house smells amazing right now. Between the beef bourguignon and the cleaners, the natural cleaners, essential oils, smelling amazing. Okay, now we can add the mushrooms. You don't want the mushrooms to be in it the whole time cooking. You just want to add them at the end. Okay, so I promised you an update on the repairs and the decorating. I have got an air filter going. This is a HIPAA air filter and, or HEPA, I should say. And this is a dehumidifier. This is one hour. Look at how much water it's pulling out of the air in the house. Ugh, and there's my lovely ceiling. 
we think the leak is fixed to be continued. But back to the stew. Now here it is with the mushrooms in it. And you notice it's pretty liquidy. It's pretty runny. So now we need to thicken it up. That's going to be the next step. But just getting all those mushrooms deep down into it. Taking room temperature butter, cut into pieces. We're going to add some butter to or flour to it. And we're going to cut that in and mix it all together. This is basically a roux, but you don't have to cook it for the stew because the stew will be cooking again after today, and I'll explain that. So once it's all mixed together, add that into the stew, mix that in. And this is what helps thicken it to a beautiful gravy. Using a bigger spoon, it's much easier to stir. I realize that. And adding some more fresh flat leaf parsley. Oh, I can't get enough of this stuff. And there you have it. Beef bourguignon. Not that hard, but it does take a few days in there and I'm going to shut it off and let it rest overnight. So I was talking in my live stream last week about my light bulbs and lighting. Lighting is very important to me. It is what helps my mental health and happiness and the ambiance for the house. So I have taken all my bulbs down to full spectrum which is equivalent to a happy light. The thing about them though is the maximum bulb I have burning in my house or outside of my house is eight and a half watts. And all these small ones that I'm showing you are between three and a half watts and one watt. So good up lighting and good warm lighting. And there's my Meyer lemon tree. She's so happy, but there's no lemons this year. So that's sad. These lights in the living room now went from 45 watts each down to five watts. A huge difference, huge savings. And the light that they emit is so much more natural and makes me feel happy. There are my beautiful pictures hung again. The shoji curtains for the spare bedroom. That's Isaac and Jaylena's room. And more great lighting again. Fun pops the color. I decided to paint the doorbell this color of blue because I could. And she who looks over. I've also reduced furniture out of this hallway. And the only thing I've left is Mr. Sandman. This is the broom for sweeping the mattresses in the bedrooms. So that's it, guys. Not much else to show. I hope you enjoyed this video and the updates from base camp i'm still decluttering and cleaning and painting and i'll take you through a more thorough tour later so namaste oh and it's five after six the kids will be here soon i did not film us having dinner together you can head over to leave her wilds channel and check out the news and the baby reveal. But we had a beautiful dinner together. And I also had enough leftover to send home with my carpenter. Because he's been such a great help. Thank you, Mark's Hands. And thank you all for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the thumbs up and share my video. And stay tuned because I will be jumping into the camper van build. I'm getting ready as we speak right now. As always, guys, I love having you here. You're amazing. And I just, I just love you so much. So much love from Oregon.